this is how Datorama is post you log in. Um, you'll like, you know, you have to go to platform.datorama.com and uh, you need to, you know, you can go ahead and you can see that these are the things uh, that are there. So uh, as I mentioned, there is, um, there are, so this is the, this is, this is overall the tool. Uh, you have the connect and mix, analyze and act and visualize. Um, these are the three. These are the three things that are there um, as tabs, which you need to like you know go and venture out regularly uh, when you're working with it. We have the marketplace that's called a custom marketplace. Marketplace is nothing but um, uh, some of the some of the you know ready-made connectors that uh, that Salesforce gives us and all are like you know um, all are acquired by uh, by Datorama uh, by Salesforce and some of them are partnered with Salesforce but the ultimate goal is uh, providing with you know more insights providing with um, providing with uh, some of the informative informative uh, insights which which basically can be a part of the marketplace you can see like um, this the you can consider them as apps uh, which are there for your help you can see like you know it's been escal by escalated by datorama by salesforce by nibler uh, by check uh, and all these are developers who have developed uh, these apps for Datorama, not only for Datorama per se, I'll say like, you know, for the entire Salesforce marketing cloud, uh, some of them are, some of them are, uh, can be, can be used, cross used maybe uh, across the Salesforce platforms, but then they are, they are pretty much true for Datorama as well as we speak. And uh, these apps can be used along with your uh, native dashboards, uh, whereby you need to you need to say let's say you want to do uh, something like a media pacing app, which is there. So you, when you want to do a media pacing, you need to connect your all the all your uh, data sources, and then you can have like you know a visual. You can have like customized visuals or or visuals that you want to aspire for. And and these are apart from the entire work that you do in dashboarding. Uh, you can just import these apps. These apps can be after you have installed. They can be like you know one of the pages in your dashboard along with the native dashboard. And uh, you can like you know take advantage of these apps and you can you know create as much as creative insights uh, you want to because we have brand watch. Um, which is like you know uh, i guess you know if if any one of you have worked on social listening brand watch is one of the important tools in that medium uh, we have cross channel marketing performances we have customer insights um, which 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 you can go ahead there are free apps and then there are paid apps so free apps are something which you can like you know once you have your accesses you can just go ahead and download the free apps from the marketplace um, if you're an admin, you can do it yourself. If you are not an admin, you need to ask your admin that can you please provide me access to it or can you please download it off to my workspace and you can use it as part of your dashboard and create uh, you know numerous visuals which which basically uh, you know uh, becomes an add-on with your native graphs. Okay. So this is this is the marketplace. Um, now coming to connect and mix. Connect and mix is connect and mix is um, the 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 most important part and the first part in uh, in data ingestion. Uh, whereby when you go to the left pane, you see data streams, and this these all are data streams basically. So if you want to connect something. You can go ahead and you can connect your data. And once you have connected your data, so how do you do that? And you, like these are data streams, right? You go to create new. And uh, as shown yesterday, uh, we have total connect, we have light connect. I'll explain what light connect is, but 
like you know for now we can keep it light maybe uh, because uh, we we do use it but I'll, i'll tell you like you know when when we use it but it's not that major but we'll take it as a as a as a topic afterwards for now let's talk about total connect total connect is nothing but um, oh uh, i can see the look and feel uh, the appearance is uh, changed a bit um do we have any uh, you know option to go back to the same uh, you know view mode which is which we was did. there in previously yeah we did uh, have uh, like you know that that switch to go back to the uh to that edition but now but previously uh, what we had now like you know previously this was this view was in beta testing uh, because i have a friend who works in the support team of datorama itself and i was in discussion with him so he said like you know this was a view that was that was being discussed since last year maybe but they did implement because people were pretty much used to the older view of data and mapping so but but now they have introduced and i don't see at least i don't see any 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 button that tells me that you can go back to the old mode uh now because it is already launched and the uh, and the and the app has updated the 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 platform is updated okay so okay. yeah okay. thank you no problem uh, so total connect basically helps me upload flat files upload um all the all the things that i want to upload which are not there as form of api so that's basically a short uh description maybe like you have a csv you have an excel you have um like you know whatever format uh, and and you can go ahead if you have a json if you have a jss if you have something like that uh, you already have those things um as part of as part of the so if you go to total connect um you can see that you have the technical vendors atara aws athena google drive spreadsheets python however sql server um sftps reports so you mostly like you know whatever you use as um part of the total connect process you get everything that you can connect from um previously amazon s3 uh, used to be not there like many things used to be not there but now as need has come in as the app as the platform has updated itself uh, we see like mostly all the connectors we see s3 we see redshift we see as your blob uh and 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 so on and so forth you have drive your spreadsheets one drive and like you know each each uh, organization is different from the other right so they have their own um, own own set of databases like i know like three clients which i have worked with uh, they are using redshift one is using s3 one is using snowflake so so basically everyone has their own choice and datorama updated it itself now apart from that if you have a flat file that you want to uh, upload in there um, which i want you uh, like you know if you have uh, time then go ahead and explore with your formats so you can go ahead and you can you can just like you know uh, choose the file wherever you it is there as an excel or as a csv and you can uh, start connecting your data right so that's about total connect and then when you go from data stream list to there are data load rules data load rules and uh, we will take it as a separate topic but to give an overview data load rules basically help us as i said you data uh, uh, how does datorama charges datorama charges us on row level row basis correct yesterday we have discussed this so when we know that you know that uh yeah that i am charged on a row level so what is the what is that i want to do about it i want to remove redundant rows and i want to keep only the uh, the the things that are helpful to me and that are that are needed and not uh, not redundant data so data load rule is first way of filtration i'll say um it's pretty similar to the quick filter that you have in if anyone has used tableau 
um, once you connect your data, uh, you get a data pane whereby your data is shown in a tabular mode. You get to see the columns, you get to see your dimensions, your measurements. And then you have a quick filter above whereby you can do the first level of filtering maybe uh, when the data comes into Tableau. So data load rules are somewhat like that whereby say suppose I have um, I have four agencies giving me data and I want three agencies only. So I can go ahead and create a rule in Datarama whereby uh, what it will do is it will uh, filter out the filter out the other one and give uh, other um, filter out the, the the agency that we don't want and it will be uh, supplying us with data uh, as a and like you know for the for the three relevant agencies that we want it's kind of a filter that comes in the first but then then it comes with uh, some advanced packages as well uh, whereby you can use operators uh, i'm sure everyone knows what are uh, and or not operators, right? Yes. Okay, cool. So uh, when you have operators, uh, life becomes a bit easy for you. That's because um, when you have uh, multiple conditions to be fulfilled while uh, while you know filtering uh, filtering a data, uh, at that point of time, what you need is operators because. Say suppose you have two conditions. I'll say that I want data for United States. Uh, okay, in my data I have United States and I have um, I have four uh, states under US. So what I say is I want data for US, but not for all the four cities, but I want it for two cities. So if there are two conditions. Uh, what we need to do is, which is which is basically a uh, if if statement that you write. So data load rules comes in comes very handy, whereby it uh, it helps us uh, use operators in in the in the in the entire system and uh, and filter out my data. So that's like a first level filtering that you can do. Uh, you have to keep in mind that data load rules are created before a data stream is created. OK, why? Because what you do is you apply the rule when you create the data stream. Now, it doesn't mean that if I have an existing data stream, um, but why we say that it is created before the data stream? Because um, because once you create a data load rule, if you create if, if if you create the data stream as the next process, then in that process itself, you can add your rule and save it off. Let me give you an example say suppose now um, so if you are someone who is uh, careless like me then you don't rename your data streams and your data streams come as total connect and then total connect one and then total connect two and then you you go ahead and see like you know oh we yeah, are i had to rename it and stuff so always do rename your uh, always do name your data streams while you're creating it um, so if i just go to edit So you know we have this. Uh, this is this is basically when we edit a data stream. There is something called load rules. So don't worry about these. We will go in detail and we will we will uh, see like you know how how things work. But when I'm creating a data stream with a with a with a given set of data, um, why I'm not going is because we have not discussed mapping. We have to discuss mapping before we before I take you guys to. Uh, creating the data stream as well. So you need to map your data and then you arrive at a screen like this, which has load mode, load rules. So this is basically the data load rules. Now, if you have created your data load rule before creating your data stream, what you can do is you can go ahead and select from here itself the load rule and it works perfectly while you save it off. Now, it doesn't mean that if I have a if I have a data stream and if I have a load rule created later, I cannot create it. No, that is nothing. There is nothing like that, but just that you need to go and repeat this process of editing the data stream, selecting the rule or unselecting the rule. That's why it is said that. You know, data load rules are created before you create a data stream. OK, so this changes. 
and don't worry we will go through it data mapping data mapping is yeah i just talked about mapping mapping is nothing but mapping your left hand side stuffs to your right hand side stuffs so what comes in left hand side is my um, is, is is basically my uh, my my raw data columns which can be very much seen using the data mapping visualization visualizer whereby it is giving me like you know what all are the things that uh, what all what all do i have in my um, external data so external data always comes to your left and internal data as in internal data means the data model or datorama model fields which are already present for your help so when you put uh, a file which has campaign from your left hand side when it comes in it automatically identifies that oh okay so uh, so so he has he has chosen campaign which means uh, like you know it identifies that it is a campaign and it it basically helps you with it uh, helps you with um, identifying the column campaign and mapping it to the data model campaign okay and then you have uh, then you have uh, the the external data and the data models mapped together we will we will go through that uh, again in detail in some time we have data source authentication let's not get into it it's nothing but like you know checking your authentication and creator type level uh, all these things we can create workflows um, let's jump to harmonization center Harmonization center contains data classification, patterns, harmonized dimensions. So we will go through each of these topics and we will see what does they mean. Uh, harmonization center as a whole has like, you know, if I don't have any pattern or classification rules uh, created in my harmonization center because it's a training workspace. Um, but we will create and we will see how it works. What is classification? Uh, has anyone worked on any kind of classification earlier? Or do you have any idea what classification means? Not in Datorama, but anywhere if you have done any form of classification. Like segmenting the data? Exactly. exactly. It is segmenting data. It is like you have multiple companies call, uh, you know, that that uh, you have book of business or you have a classification sheet that you refer to um, in order to uh, segment your data into various by by delimiters maybe or like you have you have a code and then you have the the name beside the code which you want to refer to you have a classification sheet basically so um, so that's that's data classification for you in which you can upload your data classification sheet and uh, you can make your raw data refer to that classification sheet and do that we can create rules we will create rules and we will see how it works uh, coming to patterns patterns uh, are another type of um, you know uh, harmonization tool which basically identifies the pattern of your data and uh, segments it so if you say that um, if you if you have put like you know a dimension so you need to select any dimensions over here so if you select a campaign name dimensions so it basically goes and fetches all the types of campaign dimension present in your workspace so if you select one of them and if you uh, like you know select and apply what it does is it processes all the values that comes in delimiters so if you can see that it's coming as the first value the second value after delimiter the third value after delimiter the fourth one and the fifth one. so but there are some not valids coming as well so those not valids are basically coming for all the campaigns which are not like you know set up like this or uh, some other reason what are the reasons we will discuss uh, when we are discussing patterns, but pattern is something also which also helps you segregate your data into various positions, and then you can uh, use this as well as classifications and and whatnot. Harmonized dimensions. Uh, we will uh, we will see what are harmonized dimensions, um, and uh, like you know you will see whenever you create patterns. So whenever you are creating a pattern, just understand this. Whenever you are delimiting um, a campaign name or a site name or some, anything, 
and you are putting a name for it this thing is becoming an individual uh, let me select one hmm. so whenever you put a name for this and save always remember that this is becoming an individual dimension correct position 2 is becoming an individual dimension you may put the name as quarter or this is year or this is like company name company name becomes a dimension it becomes it's as good as a calculated dimension for you correct so uh, or the fourth position as nc whatever so that's that's something uh, that's not the that's not what we are we are looking for what is there in this campaign or not but all these components in delimiters or after delimiters or before delimiters these become individual columns and they are as good as harmonized dimensions right so basically what I, what i mean by harmonized dimension is i can use this company name wala um, dimension in any of my any of my reports or any of my visuals that i want to use i can use this as a as a as a dimension and i can populate values alongside correct so when we do that what happens is in harmonized dimensions we get to see all these dimensions that i have created using harmonization uh, methodologies uh, just one question on uh, related to patterns mm -hmm. so when the taxonomy or the names were not proper then uh, we can't use the patterns feature right Uh, we can we can because there is something called a manual setup okay so it depends how you classify your data then so first is uh, so so you have identical campaigns as well in your taxonomy right uh, which which are like you know which forms a set which forms uh, what you need to do is you need you need to identify how you want to do it um so say suppose you have 20 campaigns among which 10 of them matches to your uh, matches and then rest 10 are not matching because they are different to each other but you know your first 10 gets classified you can you can have the rest what are not being classified and then um, you know you can create another pattern whereby if if the fifth position is the second position over there you can use another pattern or else you need to go back to your um you know data team and ask them to fix the tax on me but there are there are you know um uh, there are ways in which you can you can segment a pattern and you can uh you know get the data yeah definitely you are correct that uh, that is a longer process though to do that rather than that uh, if you have a uniform way of doing it then uh, definitely you can go ahead and uh, you know uniform you can maintain the uniformity when everything is identical but then there are uh, you know what do you call jugard processes which you can also apply in your patterns and you can have uh, those non classified ones but the given that uh, you know all the positions are there but they are not uh, not in the same position as you want them to you can do that process but if it is at all a different um so 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 if it is something like amazon is the name and then other campaigns are named like this definitely uh, this amazon guy will fall apart from the rest and and you need to go back to the team to maintain uniformity yeah okay for, for example uh, position 2 says q4 q3 q1 right uh, mm -hmm. for example one of the campaign name was not set properly and uh, in position 2 we are seeing company name also so at the time uh, uh, do you prefer uh, making another pattern or uh, is there any way to make changes in the pattern itself Huh, that's what I'm saying. Like you know, uh, so if you if if the second position tells you Q4 and company name comes in there, mm -hmm. um, uh, so uh, there are there are ways you can. So I won't say that create another pattern unless needed. Uh, if if it is if it is at all needed for you, uh, so there comes classification and pattern working hand in hand with itself. So uh, patterns and classification does work. 
uh, hand in hand because you know what i'll say is you if you, if 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 say suppose 50% of your campaigns have been split using patterns the rest 50% is something which is which is not not aligning to the delimiters or aligning not aligning to the positions that you want them uh, they are not as good as the rest 50 which have already matched do, then go ahead create a data classification sheet for yourself whereby whereby you can just go ahead and maybe define for you, define the classifications and then you can upload and then you can get back uh, like you can just classify your data accordingly and um, you can classify those campaigns which are not following the pattern but if you see another pattern forming in there so do go back and classify those because once you have classified say suppose position 3 in this pattern is a company name and in your other pattern if necessary so i'm saying that if there is a huge chunk of campaign which you want to classify create another pattern in which position uh, like you know whatever position is uh, you want and then you can go to your harmonized dimensions and then you can then you can there, there are ways to there are ways in which we can have both of them defined in a, a single dimension and we can uh, you know go ahead we can use formulas maybe we can use contains we can use uh, if else formulas whereby we can use colis maybe to colis functions whereby we can define that you know this and this column means the same to me so go ahead and you can you, there are multiple ways basically but it depends on what's your need if you have five campaigns which are unclassified why to go for another pattern and do all these, uh, you know, roundabout methods? Just so go when ahead. When we put uh, you know, two patterns, then uh, the dimension name, whatever we gave here, uh, you know, that will be the same, right? It will both, be both the, the pattern. Same. Yeah. Okay. It will be. Got that. Got. It. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Uh, no problem. We will discuss patterns in detail. So then we can we will take like you know, examples and we will see how to work on that. Um, rest, uh, like you know, there is there is another function of extract and not extract. So when you don't extract, uh, you don't want your position two to be extracted and you want only one and three and four. What do you do with position two? Because in structurally, data structurally, it is there, right? But you don't want it. Uh, as part of a data classification or you don't want it as a dimension. So what you do is you just toggle this button. Once you toggle this button, it basically extracts. And once you toggle this back to the left, it basically doesn't extract. But technically as a data structure, as a data model, uh, how things are, this doesn't change. But your output changes with one, three, and four getting classified as, as separate columns together. OK. Cool. Um, then we have dimensions. We have calculated dimensions. We have uh, hierarchy. We have data fusion. We have measurements. These are very important things. You know, calculated dimensions and measurements are like are like the functions which you will use at your fingertips every day, I believe. But then, as I mentioned, we will look for scalable methodologies as well because scalable methods are needed when we are working with any tool. Uh, you keep on creating calculated dimensions for yourself. One day it will happen that, you know, things, things will uh, take time to load. So see three calculated dimensions and this is taking time. Now think of what, I don't know what you will think, but 200, 300, 400 dimensions in there and, and automatically what happens is once you change a date uh, for a calculated dimension it keeps on calculating on the fly and then you use these calculated dimensions or calculated measurements in your uh, dashboards what happens is everything goes for that loading loading mode and it keeps on loading and finally it crashes so um, why do why to go for these things but then will i not use calculated dimensions i will because it is easy it is it is uh, very easy for me to use, write formulas in there and create a dimension or define something in there or uh, like i have i'm i'm onboarding a new project or i'm taking work from someone new 
what is what is to be done okay this is this 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 are the things which will fetch you this dimension okay i'll write a calculated dimension but but when 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 i'm done when my project is at a maintenance state what i'll do is i'll go ahead and 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 use the more scalable methods which help me in the longer run and it lessens my loading time loading speeds correct we have calculated measurements can anyone name me another just one calculated measurement maybe that you have used sometime cpm cpc sorry cpm cpc cpm cpm cpc correct so yeah those are calculated measurements you know that and then you have filtered measurements and then we have the media transparency center media transparency center is not part of this course but um in our discussion with uh, with the with your management uh, we have taken it up like i have taken it up as a as as one theoretical discussion that we will have because media transparency center is a very important uh, topic altogether when it comes to data rama because you know what media transparency center does it basically helps you compare your planned data with your actual data so um if you have worked with tools like prisma or media tools um these are tools whereby the planned data uh you get your planned data from uh in which in which uh, it is aspired like you know this is my planned data how my execution is how i want my campaigns to work what is what is what is it and what are the placements and what are the um ad server placements that i want to target and how it does it is done and then it is tallied with uh, the delivered data uh, that you get um from like you know the various dcm dv360s and uh, what you do is you tally both the data and you see at ad server placement id level uh, how did my planned data oh. react to my, uh, can i let react sorry nothing nothing okay so uh, media transparency center helps you to uh, do the io management um, and uh, and compare the planned versus actuals so yeah so that's that's about connect and mix and then we go to analyze and act in which we have uh, mr einstein marketing insights it's basically the ai backed um, ai backed uh, insights section in which um, there there are insights bots Uh, where where you can select your KPIs and you get a direction increasing or decreasing, and it helps you with certain analysis. Um, you can add your filters of whatever you filter you want, and uh, this bot basically keeps on running and it gives you um, what are the uh, whatever KPIs you have chosen. It basically analyzes the ongoing data at real time and provides you with insights uh, which are. which are which are helpful now i have seen those insights i have worked on those insights and i have seen that more than an insight it gives you a direction towards finding the insights and that is i'll say that is a very good feature we should not depend on einstein insights as whatever it gives it to me i'll place it in a widget and i'll showcase it people do that as well but that is more of a this is more of a directional tool which tells me you know what this this event has happened in uh, your campaigns or in your email deliveries if you're working with salesforce marketing cloud um uh, it's it basically tells you that you know in your deliveries this has happened or or in this to this date there was a shift in um shift in, uh, in um and there was a movement in that metric as a whole and you can just go ahead and check if some if, if things are things are going properly or if 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 there was if there was a longer spike it gives you like you know there was a longer spike in between this to this date and you can go ahead and check in your data what has happened uh, and you can go back to the story because you will see that when there is a spike there is a story behind it uh, if your graph is going at a regular speed and then uh, if 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 people are into um stock markets or if you have seen stock markets or equity or if you are doing any options trading or futures trading anything you will see that the market is going which we call as market going sideways where there is even and even and even and even journeys and then there is a drop 
or then there is an there is a lift what happens why does it happen because there are some news that has come up right um maybe uh, the other day it happened like you know the repo rates have increased uh, the government introduced it to control inflations so what it, what happened the market uh, like you know reciprocated in a certain manner uh, you see uh, you see people you, you know you see some sectors going down you see banks going up and all those things happening so whenever there is a spike in any form of uh, in any data that is where your lookout should be whenever you are advertising whenever you are reporting anything so it's not about data rama or tableau or sql or excel but always look for all those events that has that has helped spike your data uh, from an usual position to a to a position that needs to be looked at you will see that there is some story behind and something has happened maybe a product launch maybe a endorsement maybe a tie up maybe an acquisition and it's all part of your sales funnel or the marketing channel uh, marketing funnel which helps you to like you know identify situations identify how my campaign was strategized what is what is it that helped me what creative or what um what keywords or what are the what was structurally what was my campaign looking like or what my strat strategies were looking like which geared this up there may be a campaign launch but but if it is an existing campaign that has shown a spike that's where people have reciprocated to something maybe a new creative that have that you have put in your campaign or or a new set of rich ads which you have just uploaded has gone for the hit and you can use those uh, those things for your uh, other analysis other setup other segmentations other attributions other analysis as well which will help you uh, you know in a holistic success for your campaigns you can go ahead and 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 and, and uh tell your account managers about it and they may go ahead and make changes or may not go ahead and make changes but say that you know this is a good find that's a big win so that's how einstein works uh then there is goals goals we have discussed the other day whereby uh you know you can set goals for your measurements that if if impressions for my entire period at least oh, okay Hmm. So that's how you can you can select your goal like um, and uh, you firstly you have to name it you have a measurement that you want to look at uh, there is goal type goal type is basically you know at least exactly and at most um, and then you can choose your period granularity you can have your dimensions whatever dimension if you want any dimensions um, then single goal for all entities uh, we will discuss what is an entity as well. so you can set your goals over here and then you can monitor your goals by setting up notifications from the action center activation center and you can create actions uh, which basically helps you create um, you know notifications as we have discussed this yesterday as well uh, through emails through twilio through slack and all the other things that comes in between we have reports uh we have discussed yesterday that anything that goes out of data rama goes through a report you can create a report and you can choose the various and give a report name export format uh you know all these all these setups are there then you have a pivot table which is as similar to your excel pivot table and all these topics are separate topics so i'm just going ahead with you know these discussions very quickly so that i can go ahead with the next topic uh we have tableau data connection whereby you can you can use data rama as two two ways you can use data rama as a data engineering tool and then you can use it as a holistic tool for visualization as well but if your client is someone who is working on salesforce and he has taken up uh, and he wants the visualization to be in tableau what you can do is you can use data rama as a uh, as a as a as an automated repository where by you have apis you have connected your data to apis you have harmonized your data in data rama and your thing is ready now now that your data is ready you can use tableau data connection whereby your visualization happens in tableau and we will discuss it how it happens 
<clears throat> the last thing is visualizations. Visualization, these are your dashboards, which you have. And in each dashboard, you, have, you can create pages. So if you have an add new, it gives you blank dashboard or, or pages. So blank dashboard page, whereby that's like a canvas for you. And what you can do is you can choose the various widgets that are already there for you. And then you can create custom widgets as well. If you know JavaScript, uh, you can put images, you can have rich text, headers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's how you like, you know, you, you select your widget and you add data to it. Um, <clears throat> I don't know what data is already in here, but if I have put anything like impressions, And maybe I don't know what is the campaign is there. No oh, campaign is there, but I'm not sure like if there is any data. Anything. So it's showing a default campaign. That's how your tables come into being, and 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 all these other widgets you can use as as part of the visualization. And also you can create uh, custom visualizations. We will see like you know one or two such stuffs which you can bring in and integrate as, as a data drama uh, widget if you know JavaScript and we will take it forward from there.